All right. So today we have gone ahead and outputted our image on to paper. We've outputted a, a grayscale step wedge from the first assignment, and we've evaluated the black point and white point for our paper. And we've decided that the brightest highlight is going to be RGB 245 and that the darkest shadow is going to be RGB 5. And so we're going to remap the tonal values in this image to match the black point and white point of our paper. The paper that we tested is an Epson Premium Luster and we printed it on the Epson inkjet printers here at City College. The first thing that we're going to do is find our darkest blacks and our brightest whites. And there's a nice temporary adjustment layer called threshold that we're going to use located here. I've also brought forward the info palette, which is under window info. And I've set my um, eyedropper here to a three by three average. This means it can see nine pixels at a time in the image. This is a pretty low resolution image. Anything that goes up to 16 by 20, uh, 16 by 20 inches as a print, you can use a three by three average. As your picture start, your enlargement size starts getting bigger and bigger, you may want to use some of these other um, averages here to look at more pixels at a time. So I'm gonna set my point sample with the eyedropper to three by three. I brought forward my info palette under window info. So now I'm gonna go ahead and choose the uh, threshold adjustment. And the threshold adjustment is just te a temporary layer adjustment that I'm going to throw away after I'm done. It works like a normal histogram. On the left-hand side, you have your darkest darks, and on the right-hand side, you have your brightest highlights. So what I'm gonna do first is find my darkest values. I'm gonna creep this histogram over towards the left until I start to see some detail here. And this is just showing me my darkest values. I'll zoom in a little bit. To zoom in, I use command and the shift, uh, command and the space bar with my left hand. And then I click with my right. Um, and so here, here it is, and I'm just gonna refine this a bit. And what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to set a color sampler tool so that this um, is uh, saved. So I'm going to get my solar color sampler tool here and I'm going to click in one of the really dark values and you see here that this is color sampler uh, track number one, point number one. And this is the value that the image where it is now. It's got a red value of four, a green value of three, a blue value of 16. And we can see that this image has a strong blue cast to it. And when I turn on the threshold, of course, this is uh, forcing it to a pure black. So it's saying that if you leave it like this, it will be pure black, which is zero, zero, zero. We're not gonna leave it like that though. Next, I'm going to zoom back out. So that's command zero and find the brightest highlight, which is clearly over here. So I'm going to command spacebar and zoom in on that. Refine it a bit. And I'm going to take my eyedropper tool and ma map the brightest value. The brightest value uh, was 246, 246, 250. So again, blue is the strongest color here, which is why when we look at the image, it has a blue bluish cast to it. So the threshold adjustment layer has done its pur has served its purpose. I can throw it away now. Um, I'm going to click the tiny little trash can and throw it away. Clicking first deletes the mask. Clicking twice deletes the actual adjustment layer. You can also click and hold and drag the whole layer to the trash can. So we can see now I've mapped two areas. Area number one, which holds my darkest values, and area number two, which holds my brightest values. Based on our paper, we know that we get a hint of detail at about 245. So I'm gonna remap my highlight to 245. And also based on the step wedge test for our paper, we know we get a shadow detail of um, 
deep, deep shadows around 5 or RGB 10, between RGB 5 and RGB 10. And so what you choose to use depends on practice. You might even have to come in and adjust it a little bit. Um, and sometimes it's hard to see where that plot went. Where did it go? It gets kind of lost in here, so I'll have to find that um, in a minute. So you can use levels or curves to set your um, black point or white point. I'm going to turn the threshold back on just so I can see where on earth I put that plot number one. Does anybody remember where it went? To the right somewhere. I see plot number two, but there it is. It's hiding. Okay, so it's kind of hard to see through the weeds down there. There it is. So I'm going to go ahead and use a curves adjustment layer. I'm going to option click on the layer icon so that it asks me to name the layer. It's really important that you always name your layers. Okay. And then here I'm going to, um, I can manually remap uh, the image by clicking and dragging on the dark and light areas of the curve and watching what happens here. Or I can use an automated version. And the automated version asks you to double click on these two icons and set the value. So I'm going to double click on the black uh, eyedropper first. Double click quickly. Sometimes it's sticky and this you'll have a tr you might have trouble getting this to pop up. If that happens, try the neutral one first just to kind of get this activated here. So I'm going to double click on here. And we said that I was going to do a deep black at around RGB5. And you can, you know, you can play with these numbers based on your paper and based on your image and based on how much detail you want in your shadows. But this is a nice deep solid black. So I'm going to keep these values at RGB5. And I'm going to say OK. And I do want these to save for next time. Then I'm going to double click on the white eyedropper. And we said that I want my white value to be at 245. You can see that's just a hint uh, south of pure white. So I'm going to get a whisper of detail there. 245 is a good value, as is 250 uh, to hold detail. So um, I'm going to try 245. And if I decide it's too much detail, I might remap it again later or modify it to be 250. OK? So always start with the shadow area. So I'm going to zoom in on the shadow area. That's Command, Spacebar. And then I can add the Option key, Command, Option, Spacebar, to zoom out. And I'm going to pick up the black eyedropper first. And I'm going to very carefully roll over it. And watch what happens here in area number one. When I click once, oops, I accidentally, what happened? I accidentally have the highlight. That was a mistake. I want the black, the black eyedropper. So I undid that, edit undo. I'm going to click once. And what happens is everything gets darker. OK? Everything gets darker. And I just redid it again. You want to really be precise. So it w this went from four, stayed at 4. The green value neutralized out a little bit. But really, the biggest thing that changed is the blue value. The blue value darkened, and there's less blue in the image. So I can go through each channel and see what happened. The red stayed the same. The green pretty much stayed the same. But the blue value we can see here shifted. Okay, So about um, nine points of blue was removed. And when you have uh, values that are about three points from one another, not only is 5 a, a dark value, but it means that this area is going to be seen as neutral. So we've taken out the blue cast so far just in the dark tones. So you can see here's the before. Do you see how cool it is over in this range? And here's the after. Can you see how much warmer it looks? In this quadrant, we've taken out some blue. When you take away blue, the opposite color is revealed. Remember that we have red cars by GM. Red and cyan are opposites. Blue and yellow are opposites. Green and magenta are opposites. So anytime I take out blue, its opposite color, which is yellow, is going to be revealed. We've also added a bit of green. 
which means we've covered up its opposite, which is magenta, and we've, the red has stayed the same. So you can see that. The next thing I'm going to do is find the highlight area, and I'm going to grab the highlight eyedropper and roll over it, and this is number two here. You're going to see number two shift, and it should shift towards 245 because that's what we programmed it to do, and that was a very, very slight change. That move was very, very slight, so slight that it may not really show, except in the blue channel here, you can see that the whole quadrant moved down a little bit, warming up the image. Here's the before, here's the after. It's hard to see that so slight. If we look at the overall image, we can see that not only have we brightened the highlights and darkened the shadows, but we've also neutralized the image quite a bit. Sometimes you don't want the tonality, the black point, white point, you don't want it to affect your color. Sometimes you want to create a separate curve to affect the color. And when that's the case, you would shift your blending mode to luminosity. So in luminosity mode, notice I still have the, the cool color cast, but the tonalities the, of the white and the black have shifted. In this case, I like what's happened to the color, so I'm going to leave it in normal mode. The only thing that we don't like is the clouds. We want the clouds to stay blue. So that's where the mask comes in. I can paint the mask here and cover up the warmth that I set just in the blue part of the sky so that the blue of the sky stays nice and cool. So that's an overview on black point, white point. We'll be working more with color correction in the coming weeks. Right now, I just want you to really try to understand how the um, info palette here and the eyedropper tool and the curve works together so that you can map your black point and your white point to match what you have, uh, what you evaluate on your chosen paper and printer. Okay, we ready to do this together?